So what have I learned from my life's research? Oh my God, that's a lot. But if I could summarize it, and it might sound really esoteric and far-fetched, but I assure you, it's based on a lot of research. I believe that the history of our world may be quite different than what we've been told and taught. That in fact, the missing link between the Neanderthal and the Homo sapien is not just one link, but is a whole chain of events that have to do with advanced civilization coming to the Earth, finding the Earth in a state of very low level of evolution, and mixing their genes with ours to help the evolution along, producing the Homo sapien with the largest, with the larger brain and so on. This change or this advancement in our evolutionary step is described and in many, many different societies around the world in ancient texts, in legends, in myth of creation, all defining these advanced civilization coming to the earth called the sun gods or uh, the sons of God, having children with the women of the earth or mixing their genes with the people of the earth to produce this new human. And I believe that that interaction with this advanced civilization has been there all along of our history. That at first they may have given us even advanced technology, one of the most powerful piece of technology they had. Um, a technology that could fly a ship or produce large amount of energy or uh, produce fields that helps things grow, that can structure water, that can do all sorts of things that we would think of even today as miraculous. That very advanced technology, I believe, was present at the earliest time of our history and then was removed eventually because of a need to allow our growth to mature before we would have that level of power again. I believe at that time a decision was made, however, to embed all the information we needed to recover that level of technology so that we could have it on time for the changes that are about to occur on our planet at this time. That information was embedded in religious belief and cultural structures, even in building practices so that it would be encoded and passed on from generation to generation to this time for you and me to recover and decode and apply properly for advanced technology and philosophy. The advanced technology that comes out of this knowledge could have fundamental repercussion on our society, which cha would change our society dramatically from a society that lives really on a flat plane to a society that has access to what I call the Z-ax, have access to our solar system and maybe even access to our galaxy. I believe as well that there is a fundamental warning in all these texts, in all this knowledge that says to us, when you get that level of technology, it is crucial that you have grown to becoming a benign, collaborative society instead of a competitive, warring one. And I think and I see around me and I see in the development of this planet and of this earth and our society at this time 
that we are learning those lessons very rapidly. The field is very polarized. Many people are choosing peace, spiritual involvement, and collaboration. And many are choosing war and competition. And it's becoming obvious which one is most powerful, which one is the one that is going to be necessary for our evolutionary step at this time in history. I think we're going to be pushed along to learn those lessons because of changes as well on our planet that is going to create a certain amount of stress on our society to force us to collaborate. I am so excited to be here at this time in history when we're about to cross the event horizon of our evolutionary development. To do it with you, to do it with all of us, in collaboration, in peace. I feel that we are entering into an era of galactic relationship, when we can rise to our full potential and become the galactic beings that we are.